In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. Hello, and you're very welcome to St. Michael's Church here in Poway in San Diego as we celebrate the Mass for the third Sunday of Advent. John the Baptist said to his contemporaries, there stands among you one whom you not know not. He was referring to Jesus, of course, who was present among the people, even though they didn't realize it. Jesus is present among us as we celebrate this Eucharist. So like we always do when we gather for this sacred meal, let's pause and ask forgiveness and mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring liberty to captives. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You bring good news to the poor. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You bind up hearts that are broken. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord. In my God is the joy of my soul, for he has clothed me with the robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice, like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels. As the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything. Retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy, and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. May the Lord know your heart and your lips as your word leap in his praise, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. be with you and, and with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to, you, Lord. to you, O Lord. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, What are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? So we can give an answer to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord. As Isaiah the prophet said, some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. All of our readings today speak about joy and the need to be joyful. And we often call this season the joyful season, and rightly so, for we are waiting in anticipation of the birth of a little baby who brings so much hope with him. And wouldn't it be lovely if we had a joyful season every month? The world is definitely in need of some joy. The thing is, joy isn't consistent. 
It's not turned on 24-7. There will always be highs in one's life, but there will always be lows as well. Yet, there has been studies on certain groups of people who seem to have broken this, or discovered this secret of being happy and fulfilled in life. And what they discovered when they questioned these people was the one common characteristic they all shared was that they were happy with themselves. It wasn't money or power or success or prestige or having everything you ever wanted in life that gave them the reason for contentment and joy. It was simply because they liked themselves. Happy people have a strong sense of self-esteem because they know themselves and they have accepted themselves. As one man put it, I know what I am and I know what I'm not. John the Baptist knew exactly who he was. He had no airs and graces. He lived in poverty, in the wilderness of the desert, and he was obviously quite content with himself. For all the notice and attention that he attracted, we see a man for who he really is. He considered himself blessed to be chosen as the one who would prepare the way for the one who's coming, for the one, as he described, as the one whose sandal strap he was not worthy to untie. When the Pharisees questioned him about himself, he puts on no show of importance and claims no uh, privileges. He denies that he is a prophet, that he is Elijah, even the Messiah. He defines himself simply as the voice crying in the desert. And that fits him. He knows what he is and what he is not. Sometimes when we hear people say they need time out to find themselves, we hear that quite often nowadays. There's a lot of people who have identity problems in this world. So many nowadays are trying to find themselves and are seriously confused about who they are and what their purpose in life is. And this happens because sometimes we're afraid to look at ourselves because we're afraid of what we might find. And we're definitely terrified in showing our real selves to others. So many of us have grown up wanting to impress others, wanting to be liked by others. We can act out so many roles in our life. We can put on so many different faces that sometimes we can lose sense of ourselves. One of the most important discoveries we can make in life is knowing ourselves what we are and what we are not. Joyful living is living authentically with who and what we are. Now, this doesn't mean that we forget all our faults and failings and we stop developing as human beings. But it does mean that we should be able to accept ourselves at any given time accept ourselves as we are with all our faults and failings, without pretense or a compulsion to put on a show. John the Baptist knew who he was and what he was about. During this time of Lent, let's try to make ourselves, let's be more aware of ourselves. Let's try to be more true to ourselves. Let's try to like ourselves a little bit more, to celebrate our uniqueness, to not be afraid to show the real me, 
to live our lives as we are, the real me. Now that would be a joy. We stand and we pray our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Amen. Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for all our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With rejoicing hearts, full of faith, we pray without ceasing. For the church, during this holy season of Advent, that we testify to Christ by rejoicing in him always. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our country during these winter months, that we serve the poor and needy in a spirit of Christian charity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those in our parish who feel their faith is being tested, that they may find hope in the Advent scriptures. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who are distressed about the upcoming holidays, may they join with others in establishing new joyful memories. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all who form this worshiping assembly, that we may be united in prayer and thanksgiving to God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For all those on our website's vigil light list and written in a book of prayer intentions, especially the people of Ukraine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the relief and comfort of the sick and for all those suffering from mental or seasonal illness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who have died, may they find rest for their souls. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. O God, you have done great things for us. Strengthen us as we follow John the Baptist's call to change our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what has begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Gracious make, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim in song the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, 
who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. So together we pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, the power and, the glory, and the glory are yours now and, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, worthy 
that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and a desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, O Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Bow your heads at home now, and your response to the blessing is Amen. May Almighty God bless you in his kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you. Amen. Amen. May he nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds. Amen. Amen. May he turn your steps towards himself and show you the path of charity and peace. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. God.